everybody. Today I'm going to be reviewing a game called Daytona 500. Racing game, baby. This game was created in 1990, and it is for two to six players. Now, you may be looking at this game and thinking, great, it's just a racing game. All you're going to do is roll dice and just move around the track. No, 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 no. This game is much different than that. When I first got this game, I thought it would be simple, but I was very surprised at some of the strategy that is involved. And it's a very fun little game. So let me go ahead and show you how this game works. Welcome to NASCAR, everybody. Okay, let's show you the components. Of course, here is your paper money. Everybody is going to be receiving $300,000 to start with, and you're going to be using this to buy your cars. These are your cars. There's six of them. As you can tell, they're all in different colors. Um, these cards are going to be used to auction off the different colored cars. And uh, again, there's six of these. These cards right here have the number nine on them. This will allow you to move a particular color card nine spaces. You're going to be receiving this for each car you buy. So if you buy a green car, you're going to get the green nine card. These here are your movement cards. As you can see, there's different numbers and different colors that go along with each of these numbers. And you're going to be using these cards to not only move your cars, but also move your opponent's cars, which makes this game interesting. And you're also going to try to use these cards to figure out which cards you want to bid on. And I'll show you how you can determine that. So here is a typical movement card. Okay, so as you can see, you have a black 6, a yellow 5, an orange 4, etc. The way this works is that when you play this card, you're going to move each car that number of spaces with the corresponding color. So in this case, you're going to move the black car 6, the yellow car 5, orange 4, red 3, green 2, and blue 1. Now some cards have a um, white spot on them right here and that basically means you can choose to move any car that you want. So in the beginning of the game you're going to shuffle all the cards and everybody's going to get an equal amount of the cards here. And so what you're going to do is you're going to look at your hand here and see which cars have the highest number. So for example I've got a green 6 here, a green 6 here, a red 6 and I'm trying to find the cars that have the highest numbers because this, these are the cars I'm going to be able to move the most spaces. So in this case, green looks pretty good. I've got a green 6, a green 6, another green 6, and a green 5 here. And so green's probably a car that I'm going to want to go ahead and purchase. Um, I've also got uh, a couple of red 6s as well. So now I'm going to set this up for a two-player game. In a two-player game, you can purchase up to three cars. Um, if you're doing three players, you can purchase up to two, and um, there's other rules uh, depending on how many players that you have. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and say we're going to do a two-player game. So now, we're going to go ahead and buy these cars. And the way we're going to buy these cars is we're going to auction them off. And this car is going to get turned up here, and this is the color car that you're going to be bidding on. Right now you're bidding on orange. So you look at your hand here and you'll see how your orange looks. And you've got a couple of high orange cards here. So this might be a car you may want to go ahead and get. So let's just say everybody bids and you'll bid in increments of $10,000 and everybody has $300,000. So let's just say I went ahead and won the orange car. I spent say $100,000 on or something. So that'll go here. That'll go in the pole position. And then I will receive the uh, 9 card right here in my hand. And so now we'll go on to the next car color and the next color will be green. Now green was a color I definitely would like to have. So I'll go ahead and get this and put that in the second spot and then all the other cards will go, go ahead and get bought. And let's just say um, we got this here, this here, this here, and this here. Now you don't have to purchase a car if you don't want to. You can actually have a car that nobody owns. He'll still have to go around on the track. He basically works as a dummy car so to speak. So now we've gone ahead and gotten all our cars um, we're going to go ahead and start moving. So let's say I'm first. I'm going to look at my hand here, and I uh, had a green 6 right over here. So let's say I go ahead and decide to move the green, this car. So I've got to move the green car 6. I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I can also move diagonally like this. I can't move across. Um, I'll also move the 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can also strategically place your cars because if um, you have, you can actually block your opponents from getting past you. So that's another strategic element you can think of. And then black is going to go ahead and move two, like so. And so let's say my opponent goes and he looks at his cards and he's got, oh, let's just say he plays this one right here. So he's got a red six. The six he's going to move, red he's going to move six. One, two, three, four, five. And let's just say he goes here six. Blue cannot move because he's blocked. Two can go 
let's say he chooses orange, so he goes one, two, and green will move one. And this is generally how the moving goes. I'll go ahead and move one more time here. Let's get this card. This got a lot of numbers on it here. So let's say I move blue, and you have to go in order as well. So blue goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, black will go five. If you can, it'll go one, two, three, four, and five. Yellow will go four. One, two, three, four. Orange goes three. Red will go, t cannot go because he's blocked, but green will go one. Now there's another unique rule in here called drafting. Now drafting basically works like this. Say you, ha you're t you have your yellow car and you end your turn here behind the green car. The next time the green car moves, this car is going to get to move an extra space. So let's say the green car on his turn moves two, like so. This car will go ahead and move one. And any car that's behind the yellow car can also move one. That's the basic drafting rule. The other rule here is the wall. Now you'll notice that um, the spaces here are cut in half. And what this means is that if you say, let's say you have this. Let's say I've got the black car here and I want to try to move six. And I'm right here. Let's say I'm here. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, according to the rules, unless I can end my turn on one of these spaces right here, I'm not going to be able to use this passing lane. So in this case, I won't be able to do it. However, if I was here, I'd go one, two, three, four, five, six. Things get really interesting when uh, you go across these walls here because oftentimes you're going to have cars that are going to line right up. So anyway, uh, you're going to basically keep on playing these cards like so. And... Um, what's going to happen is eventually the different cars are going to cross the finish line. So let's say yellow goes and crosses the finish line. He'll get first place and he'll get $300,000. And whoever owns the car will get that. And let's just say these are the cars that end up uh, in fifth, sixth place. Now there may be an op a chance where a car won't be able to get across the finish line. If he doesn't, basically he's considered wrecked and out of the race. So let's just say that's, he's out. So whoever owns the yellow car will get 300000 black will get two hundred, dollars uh, green will get one fifty, dollars red will get 100 dollars and blue will get eighty. dollars Now, you can choose to basically do more laps if you so desire. In this game, you have a choice. You can either do, just do one full lap and do another race, or you can do as many laps as you so choose. And basically, whoever ends up with the most amount of money at the end of the race will win the game. And that's generally how you play uh, Daytona 500.